Hello, everyone. My name is Tony Tanzi, Senior Network Engineer with Comp Solutions Company. In this Tech Tip installment, we'd like to talk about one of the features that's available to us with our Palo Alto Networks firewalls, and that is Wildfire. So, Wildfire is the ability to detect zero day malware. So, if we were to look at why this is important, first we have to look at the role of malware. So, malware is designed for someone to get an internal foothold to control and expand a sustained attack inside of our network. So, the ability to have us perform an action which we can then download some type of spyware that can also have command and control to give someone remote control of your computer so they can then escalate an attack inside of your network. So the challenges with this are numbers. Security often fails to see the infected file. So it could be inside an application, it could be within encrypted traffic, or being delivered via a proxy, could be running on a non-standard port, or could be compressed content. And then security will also often fail to recognize this traffic as malware. And reasons behind that is it could be very targeted or custom malware. So it's not something that is seen in the wild, which is a requirement for most AV vendors to be able to develop a signature. It can be polymorphic, meaning that it's constantly changing. So it will never look the same way twice. So any signature that's created, it can now miss that signature because it's changing. It could be newly released malware. And the time to protection is very high if this is a very targeted and custom type of malware. So what does Wildfire do? It identifies malware by direct observation in a sandbox environment. It looks at more than this number is now up to 100 plus malicious behaviors. Once a verdict is determined that this is malware, it will generate a signature for that malware and the infected files and the command and control traffic and distribute those signatures to all firewalls via regular threat updates and if we have the subscription service be guaranteed delivery of these new signatures within one hour. It also gives us access to a portal to get some more forensic detail and insight into the malware behavior. So why was this file determined to be malware? What were the behaviors that caused that verdict to be determined. Some other background. Modern attacks now are a blend of malicious traffic and malware. Both of those are being delivered over the network. And that malware then provides someone to have that command and control to have further ability to attack inside your network. And this traffic is often being hid inside encrypted traffic, port evasion, tunnel traffic, re-encoded malware, so it's constantly changing, and polymorphic or custom malware. So one of the nice features with the Palo Alto Networks file that we know is that it can identify traffic based on an application, not just a port number. So we can create policy based around applications and look for malware within a specific application. Traditional AVs have problems with a lot of this targeted type of malware. The AV providers need to see a lot of signatures for them, or need to see a lot of samples in order to create a signature for this type of malware. So being that this is very targeted, polymorphic, constantly changing, or newly released, those AV vendors, it takes them a long time to provide protection for this new malware. A little bit about the wildfire architecture. We configure on our firewalls to send traffic up to a cloud environment that's controlled by Palo Alto called the wildfire cloud. This cloud is run in a sandbox and the files that we sent are observed against 100 plus malicious behaviors to determine if this is malware. Some of the characteristics we look at 
is is there some command and control attachment to this? Does it try to exfiltrate any sensitive data? Or does it try to download additional malware? Some of the behaviors that we look for. If the determination is made that this is indeed malware, we will then add that and create a signature for this specific type of malware that can then be downloaded to our firewall. And again, with the subscription service, we can check every hour for new signatures. So we can be guaranteed a new signature is delivered within one hour. And that one hour is traditionally the time, the most important time for a new type of malware. Take note that we are not blocking these files from being delivered. The file will still be delivered, but we are copying that up to the wildfire cloud and our firewall will create a hash for that file which is used to determine whether or not that file has been seen before. So we still deliver the file, we copy it up to the wildfire cloud for determination. And then once a determination is made, we can then have a signature that can be delivered within one hour to prevent any subsequent infection for that malware. So wildfire feeds our firewall. When wildfire determines that there is malware, it can deliver those signatures in the forms of an AV signature, could be a DNS signature, a specific malware URL. So Palo Alto now has their own URL filtering engine called PanDB. The reason behind this was so that any URLs that were found as part of a wildfire exchange to be malware can dynamically be added to the malware category within the Palo Alto PanDB URL filtering engine. And we can also create signatures to block those command and control types of malware. Wildfire itself gets fed through traditional intelligence sources, things like known IPS signatures, and from the traffic that is sent up from wildfire users. So one of the strengths of wildfire is you do not only get the benefit of things that you're sending up for interrogation, you get the benefit of what everyone is sending to the wildfire cloud for interrogation. So you may receive signatures for a piece of malware that was detected by another customer, and you will now have prevention for that malware. So this screenshot is a snapshot in time when Wildfire was first in its beta. In a seven-day span, there were 4,722 pieces or new files of malware found. In those 4,722 4, files, 2,184 of them were malware that was not detected yet by any of the top AV vendors. So 46% of the traffic was yet undetected malware by any of the top AV vendors. So the wildfire subscription service uh, gives us a number of features. So it allows us to send the wildfire logs back to the device. Without the subscription service, you would have to go to the wildfire portal, which I will show you in a few minutes, to be able to look at what the result was for the files you had sent. With the subscription service, these results and logs are sent directly to the firewall. So you do not need to go to the portal to get the verdict. We get some availability for syslogging and SNMP traps and email and panorama for being able to do some logging and alerting for these events. We also get access to an API key that allows us to upload samples and URLs of our own to be interrogated in the wildfire cloud. And then the subscription service then gives us a guarantee of the hourly wildfire signature feed. So we will get the latest malware signatures from wildfire and we can selectively pick the increment on how often we want to check for new signatures. So if we look at a common attack, these are again very targeted. Things like social media are used to try to find out information for individuals within a particular organization. 
and then carve an attack based around things that are learned about that individual. Maybe an interest that we found from one of the social media sites. And we can carve a malicious email to looks like it's coming from someone that they trust. And that may then take them to a specific URL. And then once they go to that URL, there's a vulnerability that's exploited to download malware and that command and control traffic to give that attacker the ability to attack further in our organization. And then once we have that signature, we are now prevented from that malware from further happening. So with the subscription service, we get logging on the firewall. So on the monitor tab, we will have a wildfire icon there on the left. And that will show us the logging for things that were sent up to wildfire and the different verdicts of whether or not they were benign or they were determined to be malware. There will be a link there to see the various virus coverage by the top AV vendors. So that will take us to virus total to see if anyone has coverage for this type of malware yet. We also have available to us the portal. So without the subscription service, you would have to go to the wildfire portal to look at the files that were sent up by your firewall to determine what those verdicts were and to get details around those verdicts. So we get to the wildfire portal by going to HTTPS, wildfire.paloaltonetworks.com. We use our support account to log in to the portal. And then from there, we're presented with a dashboard. And that dashboard will show us today in the last seven days based on serial number. And it will show us a summary of the submission for everything we sent. We can still luckily drill down into a specific serial number or look at all this, all of the entries that were put into the portal and get a detailed analysis report of a specific piece or specific file that was sent. We see there the verdicts, whether or not they're benign or they're malware. So first, before we wrap this up, I would like to show you a couple samples of some of the wildfire traffic that we can see. So here in our firewall, some of the things we can do is under our setup tab, we can selectively pick what we want to send up to the wildfire cloud. So what information do we want to send? Palo Alto does not keep any of this information, so we don't have to worry about sensitive data being held somewhere. But we can selectively check mark what information we want to send as part of that session. We can pick the size of the file as well, the maximum file size that we want to send to the wildfire cloud. We will then see in our monitor tab that we have this wildfire icon and this with the subscription service, this is where we would see all the information about files that we had sent to the wildfire cloud, whether or not they were determined to be benign or malware. And we would have a link to the portal to get detailed information. And that link to the portal takes us to HTPS wildfire.paloaltonetworks.com for our specific account. And we can see, based on serial number, all the files that were sent by this specific serial number up to the wildfire cloud. And we can see the verdict for those files. We can selectively go in and get detailed information on one of these events. So here we have a piece that was determined to be malware. We have our hash information. So again, this hash is used by the firewall and by the wildfire cloud to determine whether or not this file has been seen before. We have the serial number of the firewall that sent it. And then we get summaries and very specific analysis around the behavior of this file and why the verdict was determined to be malware. So we get behavior information. 
We get some traffic information as far as domains that were used, any type of URL methods that were used, countries that were involved in part of this exchange, detailed events as far as registry settings that were done and set by this file, processes that were spawned, and files that were written to or deleted. So all of this information is why the verdict of malware was determined. And then this link for virus coverage will take us to virus total, which will show us who has coverage for this malware. And in this case, eight out of 45 vendors had coverage for this piece of malware. The other ones do not have a signature. So anyone with a green check mark does not yet have a signature for this piece of malware. So we can see some of the big ones here, Kaspersky, Malware Bytes, McAfee, for this specific piece of malware did not yet have a signature. As far as configuration, when we configure for wildfire, we configure a file blocking security profile with the action of forward. We can specifically look for a file type in a specific application or look for it in any applications. We will then take the security profile and attach it to the appropriate security policies like we do for other security profiles to start forwarding traffic up to wildfire for interrogation. Again, this is Tony Tansy, Senior Network Engineer with Comp Solutions Company. Please visit www.compsolutions.com for all your networking needs. If you would like further detail, any further discussion around wildfire, please reach out to your outside sales representative and schedule that appointment. Thank you for your time and have a great day.